This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at the subject of the rapture of the church. And I've done several studies on this, but it's one of those studies you just got to keep talking about over and over again. Because, you know, it's a comfort to Christians and also because it's one of the mysteries in the Bible that we need to talk about over and over again. But at the rapture of the church, what will you, do you need to expect Number one, souls of dead believers come back with the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 4.13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now the them which are asleep are not your fellow church members just taking a nap during the preaching. They are the saved ones who have already died and went on to be with the Lord. And at death, their soul went to the third heaven. It didn't stick around on earth to haunt your house. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, showing you that when we die, when we are absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. So our soul goes to be with the Lord at death. And it's the souls of dead saints that will come back with the Lord at the rapture. The body of the dead saint went to the ground, but their soul went to be with the Lord. And there are some men who teach that the rapture is a new teaching. However, these dead saints would prove them otherwise if we could hear them from heaven, which we can't. But there are plenty of those who are asleep, who have gone on to be with the Lord, that taught the rapture way before the 1800s. But 1 Thessalonians 4.14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Remember, they're not asleep. They're not just snoozing. You know, they're with the Lord right now. And they're coming back with him, their soul. At the rapture, those who are asleep, the saved ones who've already died, will come back with the Lord and their soul will go back to their body as it is changed into an incorruptible body. And this will cause the graves to burst open. You talk about a mystery to the world. This will blow everything away that's ever happened in the history of man. It will be on the news. It will be on YouTube. It will be on Facebook. It will be on Twitter. And whatever the new social media platform will be at that time, just about every town you see has a little graveyard with a 100 people or so Hundreds of people, maybe, that have been buried there a hundred plus years. And sometimes you forget it. It isn't just the living saved people that go missing. It is also the dead bodies bursting out of the graves. And now First Thessalonians 4.13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. One of the hopes we have as a Christian is seeing our saved loved ones again who've already went to be with the Lord. But the lost world does not have that hope. In Ephesians 2.12, it says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. They don't have any hope. The hope that all lost people are lacking is the blessed hope. The glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. In Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you're saved, then this should be a purifying hope. In 1 John 3.3, 3, it says, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So knowing that Jesus Christ could come back at any moment is a purifying hope. It will cause you to live pure if you are consistently looking for the Lord to come back at any moment. So, the next thing. We saw that souls of dead believers will come back with the Lord at the rapture. And next, saints that are alive on earth aren't left behind at the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 4.14, it says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So Paul says, We which are alive and remain. He included himself with the, those who are alive and remain. He possibly believed the rapture would be in his day. Imagine being at work, and all of a sudden you hear the sound of a trumpet, and you shoot up through the air. Whether you will teleport through the roof or bust it wide open is something that I don't know. However, this remind, reminds us, you know, a lot of damage 
is going to happen at the rapture. While this will be a glorious day for us, it will be a catastrophe on the earth. Cars will crash and planes will fly into buildings. There will be so many machines in operation that will cause damage when the Christian operating the machine just vanishes into thin air. Think about the TV shows that will be made, about this sudden disappearance of millions of people. Uh, the Investigation Discovery Channel will make documentaries and numerous series about it. Think about the vloggers and uh, people on TikTok who will have footage of the thing taking place. Think about the CTV footage from security cameras. I believe there will be tons of footage of the event. If the rapture happens while you're still alive, then you will be an exception to the rule in Hebrews 9.27, which says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, you will never have to see death. The Christian who is alive at the rapture is pictured by Enoch in the Old Testament. Enoch was caught up in a rapture, and he never saw physical death. It says in Genesis 5.24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And also remember what Jesus said in John eleven twenty five and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So there are going to be some Christians that never see physical death. Now the next thing. What's another thing that's going to happen at the rapture? You're going to see the Savior shouting in the heavens you're going to see the souls of dead believers the saints aren't going to be left behind and you're going to have the savior shouting in the heavens first thessalonians 4 16 for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first so you see the lord comes to get us at the rapture angels don't come to get us cherubims don't seraphims don't but Jesus does. This shows a difference between this rapture and the rapture in Matthew 24. And I have to ignore this if I'm going to reject a pre-trib rapture and take the pre-wrath, which is really just a mid-trib rapture belief, using Matthew 24. Notice how in Matthew 24, 31, angels gather together the elect. In Matthew 24, 31, where it says, And he shall send his angels to the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other i have to admit this seems like a completely different event and when the lord comes to get us at the rapture his voice will sound like thunder to the lost world in john 12 28 through 29 it says father glorify thy name then came there a voice from heaven saying i have both glorified it and will glorify it again the people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered others said an angel spake to him Job 37, 4 through 5, And after it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency. And he will not stay them when his voice is heard. He won't stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he which we cannot comprehend. And then when John is caught up in Revelation 4, it definitely seems to picture the rapture. And look what happens in Revelation 4, 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So God's voice at the rapture will sound like a trumpet saying, Come up hither. What else will he say? I believe we will hear our names. In John ten three through 4, it says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth him. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And he putteth forth his own sheep. He goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, so we'll know his voice. He's going to say, come up hither. We'll hear his name, just like he said, Lazarus, come forth. He's going to, probably going to say, our name, and then come up hither. So at the rapture, when Jesus calls your name and says, come up hither, the Holy Spirit will let you know it's him. You will know his voice. You'll know it isn't something like Project Bluebeam. You'll know the real thing when you see it and when you hear it. Song of Solomon chapter 2 seems to give a prophecy of the rapture. In Song of Solomon 2, 9 through 10, it says, My beloved is like a young, is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. That's the Lord Jesus Christ talking to us at the rapture. 
Now, Song of Solomon is about a man and a Gentile bride. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, and he is calling out his bride at the rapture. And look at verse 9. In chapter 2, it says, He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. Imagine at the rapture, Jesus Christ looks through the windows of heaven before he comes. And you see Malachi 3.10, if you didn't know about the windows. But what if you look up and see him looking at you through the windows before he comes down in the clouds? You'll hear his voice. But the lost people in the world will just hear thunder. Second Samuel 22.14, The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. Psalm eighteen thirteen. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hell, stones, and coals of fire. Now another instance in the Bible refers to Jesus Christ crying with a loud voice. And the very next verses are about the Old Testament saints coming out of the graves. Just like at the rapture of the church, he will shout before the dead in Christ rise. In Matthew 27, 50 through 52, it says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So when Jesus shouts, uh, the dead can't help but come up. Then another example, as we already said, Lazarus died, and Jesus cried with a loud voice in John eleven forty three through 44. It says, And when he had thus when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. That's going to happen. This dead, uh, this old dead body that we're in, he's going to say, Loose him and let him go. And we're going to be changed into a new body. So we're going to hear the Savior shout in the heavens at the rapture. And next, the rapture is going to be a sign to the unbelieving Jew. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 through 18, it says, Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we will meet the Lord in the air, and we will be gone from this world. The world will enter a completely different dispensation. It will enter a time called by many the tribulation, the time period is a time of tribulation, but the Bible calls it Daniel's 70th week. It calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. And this sudden disappearance will be a great first sign to the unbelieving Jews to start a tribulation that will be full of signs to unbelieving Jews. 1 Corinthians 1.22 says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Notice that phrase, caught up. That that proves a rapture, even though the word rapture isn't in the Bible. What is the rapture? It is when the Lord catches up the saints to the third heaven. Notice the other times you see the phrase caught up, that men are taken to the third heaven, just like they are in 1 Thessalonians 4. For example, in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of body I cannot tell, God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. So caught up referring to somebody going up to where the Lord is. Revelation 12, 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, Revelation 4, 1 again, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So, so many cases, you have somebody being caught up, and it's to the third heaven. That's what's going to happen at the rapture. And this, I believe, this will cause many unbelieving Jews to believe, or it's going to at least plant a seed in many of them who will later believe. So we're going to hear the Savior shouting. It's going to be a sign to unbelieving Jews. The saints aren't going to be left behind. The souls of the dead are going to come back with the Lord. And next you're going to hear the sound of a trumpet. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So what happens at this last trump? Our bodies are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Do we go up in a moment in twinkling of an eye, or our bodies just change that quickly? We may not know for sure until it happens. But if we go up like Jesus did, then when the last trump is heard, 
they may behold us going up into heaven. For example, in Acts 1, 9 through 11, it says, When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go. And then Elijah, Elisha saw Elijah go up to heaven in Second Kings 2.11. So um, it's possible that our bodies are just what's changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, and we don't actually leave in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. I'm not saying that for certain, but if we do, then maybe people will possibly see us going up. But many people are on video with trumpet sounds in the background. Uh, this has led many people to believe that we're already in the tribulation. And obviously, as Bible believers, that we know that we're not in the tribulation. This reminds me, though, that once again, in a world when everything seems to be recorded electronically, the sound of a trumpet and the sound of or the sound of thunder, actually, to the lost world, when Jesus Christ calls us home, will be heard around the world and recorded on video by many and be uploaded with, within a, a few minutes of it even happening after we're gone. But that's it's going to be the sound of a trumpet. And next at the rapture is going to be scriptures fulfilled. Old Testament scriptures fulfilled. Isaiah 25, 8 says, He will swallow up death and victory. And 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty three through 54, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave. And death is going to be swallowed up in victory by us at the rapture because of the, what the Lord Jesus Christ has done, and we're saved from wrath through Him. That's how you know that you're not going through the tribulation, because the entire seven years is wrath, and we're saved from wrath through Him. But the scriptures about the rapture will be fulfilled, and you'll be part of that fulfilling of scripture. If you you're born again, then you are included in 1 Corinthians 15, 53 through 54. You are included in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. It's scripture fulfilled. Something that shows the Bible is right is everything is turning out just like the Bible says that it would turn out. And even though there aren't any signs for the rapture, you can see things already going in the direction of how it will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. So if you don't want to be left behind, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. And the Bible says in Romans ten thirteen, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.